Yep, we're doing an iceberg. This is the bizarre animal iceberg. I've always had an interest in animals, probably goes back to seeing those zoo books commercials from way back when. That camel just looked so chill. I came across this iceberg on Reddit from user me random numbers who did a fantastic job putting this together. There'll be a link to it in the description as well as a link to his revised iceberg. If you've never seen one of these iceberg videos before, basically the lower and lower you go, the weirder, scarier, and less known it gets. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, some of those later entries are freaky. This thing is massive, like all the animals I could ever want to talk about right in one place. Because this iceberg is so big, I'm probably going to make this into a series. Don't worry pinball fans, I'll still make content for you guys. But yeah, in general, I'm gonna be a lot less jokey here than in my main videos. I don't think it really fits the vibe of an iceberg, so let's just chill and talk about some funky animals. Also, we're gonna be skipping around a bit for these first couple of tiers. I think most people that come to these types of videos just want to hear about things they didn't know about. I'm not gonna waste your time with things like African elephant, praying mantis, hippo. You guys just want to hear about the weird ones. Alright, I'll stop wasting your time rambling on about boring intro stuff. Let's just get right into it with... Blobfish The blobfish is a deep sea fish living off the coast of Australia and Tasmania. They live at depths of 600 to 1200 meters, where the pressure is 60 to 120 times greater than that at sea level. First discovered by a team of scientists around the Norfolk and Lord Howe Islands, the blobfish is often called the ugliest animal due to its gelatinous appearance, but this isn't exactly an accurate depiction of the blobfish. It actually looks a lot more normal in its natural habitat, it's just the pressure difference is kind of pushing its body outwards when brought up to the surface. This pressure most likely makes the gas bladder inefficient for maintaining buoyancy, so instead the flesh is primarily a gelatinous mass with a density slightly less than that of water, which allows the blobfish to float above the seafloor without expending much energy. The blobfish has a relative lack of muscle, which is not a problem as its main food source is edible matter that just kind of floats in front of it, which I'm sure as we'll see is a very common theme for these deep sea creatures. Platypus the platypus is a semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal of action. Action meaning it's one of the only venomous mammals. That's right, male platypus have a venomous spur on its hind foot. This guy's weird and their appearance kinda has a mythical quality to it. It lays eggs, it has a bill of a duck, a tail of a beaver, and the feet of an otter. Wait, they get even stranger, cause the platypus can use their bills to gain an extra sense. Platypus have something called electrosense. For them, that means that they can sense electric fields generated by the muscular contractions of their prey. That's crazy. The first European naturalist to hear of the platypus could not wrap their heads around such a weird creature being actually real. One of them even took a pair of scissors to a taxidermy to look for stitches. But alas, no stitches were found. Axolotl Axolotls are salamanders found only in Lake Xochimilco in Mexico City. They're unusual from other salamanders in that they keep their external gills and remain underwater when they reach maturity. They're used a lot in scientific research due to their ability to regenerate entire limbs, gills, or even parts of their eyes and brains. The species is named after the Aztec deity Xolot, who transformed himself into an axolotl to avoid being sacrificed by the other gods. Gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Right now, the axolotl is considered a critically endangered species in the wild due to urbanization and water pollution in their one and only habitat. It would be a huge shame if these little guys went extinct, especially considering the cultural and historical ties they have to the city. Kiwi Kiwis are little flightless birds endemic to New Zealand. They are what's called ratites, which are like ostriches and emus and such. But unlike most other ratites, which are these big beefy birds, kiwis are not so big like the size of a chicken. Kiwis have always been able to survive because there were never any large predator species on New Zealand. They just got to be to themselves and live their best lives. But the introduction of bigger invasive species from humans have proved to be a big problem for the little birds. Kiwis are recognized as an icon of New Zealand, and in 2015 when New Zealand wanted a new flag, this proposed design with a kiwi shooting a laser gained a lot of notoriety. Cause I mean, just look at it. Why they didn't end up going with this flag is beyond me. Beluga Beluga whales are cetaceans that live in the Arctic. They have gotten some unique adaptations to live there, such as their all-white color and the lack of a dorsal fin to help swim under ice. 
More notably, however, in their big smooth forehead, they have something literally called a melon that deals with echolocation. Its sense of hearing is very highly developed, allowing them to better find breathing holes under sheet ice. They're also sometimes called white whales due to their color, or sea canaries due to their high-pitched calls, and they always sound like they're laughing. What's so funny, guys? Narwhal. In the same family as the beluga whale, we have the narwhal. Narwhals are famous for having a big unicorn-like tusk, which in reality is one long protruding canine tooth kinda corkscrewing out of its face. It's been long debated what these tusks are actually for, with possible explanations being as a weapon, poking holes in the ice for air, or for rivalry and mating. However, detailed analysis revealed that the tusks have millions of nerve endings and act as a sensory organ picking up on stimuli in the environment. It's thought that narwhals rubbing their tusks together is actually a way to communicate instead of for fighting. Red Panda Red pandas are small mammals native to the eastern Himalayas in southwestern China. Red pandas are the only living member of the family Aeluridae. I hate to burst everyone's bubble, but they're probably not actually pandas. Genetics place them closer to raccoons and weasels. They got elongated wrist bones that act as persuado thumbs to grab stuff like bamboo. Red pandas are best known for being really adorable. They just live in the forests and eat bamboo shoots. Poaching and destruction of their habitat led red pandas to becoming an endangered species. But people really don't want to let these ones go, cause why would they? I mean just look at it. Conservation programs have started up all over, like in Nepal, Bhutan, India, and of course China. Red pandas have also been featured in a lot of pop culture, so it's not like anyone's forgetting them anytime soon. Humpback Anglerfish Humpback anglerfish are probably the scariest looking of all the anglerfish. I mean, those teeth just look... uncomfortable, to put it lightly. Like all anglerfish, humpback anglerfish sport a special dorsal fin spine called an elysium that has a lure at the tip to entice their prey, which can sometimes be bigger than the anglerfish due to their giant teeth and huge stomachs. This particular anglerfish you're looking at is female, with the males being tiny and not as threatening in comparison. But luckily for these males, they don't have to become a parasite to mate like the other anglerfish. They can just temporarily attach themselves and release their special sauce before going on their merry way. Aardvark An aardvark is apparently what Arthur is. What, don't see the resemblance? Aardvarks are medium-sized burrowing nocturnal mammals native to Africa. They have long snouts like a pig used to sniff out food, particularly bugs like ants and termites. Once it finds a mound, aardvarks will dig them out with their big claws. They'll also use their claws to dig burrows to live in and have babies. Seems like a pretty good deal to me. Aardvarks aren't that crazy, I think the only reason they're on here is because they look kinda funny. And yeah, they do look funny. Kinda cute actually. Long Snouted Seahorse So seahorses in general are pretty strange, you can kinda see where they get their names. Seahorses have a lot of little quirks that make them so strange compared to other fish. Their pathetic little fins make it hard to actually get around, so they use their prehensile tails to tether themselves to stuff as to not get pushed around by the water current, cause, you know, they can't even swim against that. You wouldn't think it, but seahorses are actually carnivorous, feeding on the tiniest of crustaceans. They lack a stomach, so they have to constantly find food to stay alive. One of the most well-known strange facts about the seahorse is that it's actually the males that are the ones that give birth. A seahorse couple will do their fertilization thing all normal, but then the female will deposit the eggs into the male's pouch to develop. Scientists thought it was pretty weird that seahorses do this, and wanted to figure out how this happened. They concluded that females expend so much energy just generating the eggs that they needed the males to help incubate them. The whole courtship process for seahorses is pretty romantic, going through a whole four-step process and then carrying the burden of eggs together. Some of them even mate for life, so yeah, pretty romantic fish. Cassowary Cassowaries are more ratites, being strong flightless birds. They're visually distinct from other ratites, having bright colorful skin. Native to the tropical forests of New Guinea, the Aru Islands, and northeast Australia, cassowaries mainly eat fruit, but they'll really eat just about anything, even meat. Cassowaries, especially young ones, will eat just about anything they can fit in their mouths, typically eating it in one gulp. Cassowaries are shy birds and try to keep away from humans, but can be dangerous if provoked. They have a strong kick coupled with a dagger-like claw and can run up to 50 kmh, so it's probably best just to let them be to themselves. Spotted Hyena Spotted Hyena are also known as Laughing Hyena, cause, you know, they're always clowning around. So there's something really, uh, let's call it interesting about the female hyena's anatomy and behavior. I don't really know if it's the kind of thing I can talk about on YouTube, but I do suggest you look it up if you're interested. It's really something. Echidna. Guys, I'm sorry. 
Real echidnas don't fly. They don't punch. They don't really climb. They do dig though. They got that one right. Echidnas are the other monotreme, mammals that lay eggs. Also like the platypus, echidnas have electrosensors, this time on this snout thing. The echidna's electrosense isn't nearly as strong as the platypus's however, and they mainly just use it to find worms or termites. Also, because they are related to the platypus, echidnas are decent swimmers, typically taking a dip to wash their spines. Speaking of, their hedgehog-like spines probably confused a lot of early naturalists, you know among other things. Just like the hyena from before, there's something about the echidna's anatomy, this time male, that I think YouTube might get mad at me for mentioning. All I'm gonna say is, there's four of them. Okay, moving on. Giant Anteater. Anteaters, as the name would suggest, are mammals that eat ants. Shocker. There are four different species of anteater, and the giant anteaters are by far the biggest, measuring at 182 to 217 centimeters and weighing at 33 to 50 kilograms. While most anteaters are arboreal, climbing trees to get their food, giant anteaters are terrestrial, opting to use their large claws to dig at ant and termite mounds. These guys don't have teeth, so they have to use their long sticky tongue to get into all those grooves in the ground and slurp up ants. And they're very good at this too. A giant anteater will spend about a minute feeding at a nest, visiting up to 200 nests in one day and eating as many as 30,000 insects. To an ant, this guy is like the biggest monster out there. He's like the ant version of Godzilla, but actually real. Nine Banded Armadillo the nine-banded armadillo is the most widespread of all the armadillos, being found in South, Central, and North America. The name armadillo means little armored one, and they get that name from their, big surprise, armor. The bands that the nine-banded armadillo gets its name from helps it bend its shell and curl up into a cute little ball, and this armored ball is pretty damn tough. The nine-banded armadillo tends to jump straight up like Scooby-Doo when startled. I don't know, there's not a whole lot to this one, I just think it's cool. South American Tapir wouldn't you believe it, this is the second time I've had to talk about tapirs on this channel. Before starting this channel, I would have thought I'd only talk about them approximately zero times. Life is so full of surprises, I guess. By the way, you guys should definitely check out my video on yokai. Alright, that's enough shilling. Tapirs are portly little guys with short trunks used to grab foliage, with their diet consisting of mostly fruits and leaves. Tapirs will take a dip in the water to let fish pick parasites off of them. Now, you'd think by the tapir's appearance, with its little trunk and water-loving disposition, would be related to an elephant or a hippo, but tapirs are odd-toed ungulates, which actually makes them more closely related to rhinos and horses. Also, the babies are cute and look like Bambi. Capybara Capybaras were once a pretty obscure animal, but thanks to good ol' internet memes, they've become much more recognizable. Capybaras are the largest living rodent, and if the face doesn't give it away, are closely related to things like guinea pigs. Capybaras can grow up to 134 centimeters in length and can weigh up to 66 kilograms. They are a highly social species, usually bunching up into groups of 10 to 20 individuals, but groups in the hundreds have also been noted. Like a lot of animals in this first tier, capybaras are semi-aquatic, choosing to live near lakes, rivers, marshes, etc. in South America. And they're really good swimmers too, being able to hold their breath underwater for up to 5 minutes. Galapagos Tortoise Galapagos tortoises from the Galapagos Islands are very large tortoises. In fact, they are the biggest living terrestrial ectotherm which I'm sure is a very coveted title. One impressive record they do hold, however, is they live longer than any vertebrate. If you're not a science nerd and don't know what a vertebrate is, it's like most of the animals that you think of when you think of animals. Not bugs though. Which makes this record actually impressive since a Galapagos tortoise in captivity can live up to 177 years. Comparisons of tortoise species on different islands as noted by Charles Darwin contributed to the development of his theory of evolution. I'm not gonna go into all the extensive research done on them over the years. You're free to look into it on your own time. I just don't have the time here to get into the implications of things like different islands, gigantism, and shell shape. Muskox Muskoxen are hooved mammals native to the Arctic. They're known for having a thick coat and an even thicker smell, hence the name musk ox. The musk is for attracting females during mating season. The musk ox's Inuktitut name is Umingmak, meaning the bearded one, which is definitely fitting. Despite looking like an ox, muskoxen are in the Caprini tribe, placing them closer together with sheep and goats, so I guess that's something we have in common. Okapi 
Okapi are an herbivorous species endemic to the Northeast DRC. They look like a hodgepodge of zebra and antelope or something, and you wouldn't guess it by looking at them, but they're actually most related to giraffes, being the only other living member of the family Giraffidae. Without the giraffe's signature long neck, Okapis choose to inhabit canopy forests at altitudes of 500 to 1500 meters. Okapis are classified as endangered, with major causes including habitat loss from lodging and human settlement, illegal mining, and hunting for those striped skins. Okapis are very elusive, and before the 20th century, completely unknown to the Western world. They'd even be called the African unicorn to early Europeans because they were just so hard to find. Proboscis Monkey Proboscis monkeys are arboreal old world monkeys endemic to the island of Borneo, specifically being found in mangrove forests and coastal areas. I'm pretty sure the only reason the proboscis monkey is on here is because of that big squidward nose he's wearing. It's theorized that females choose to mate with males who have the biggest noses. It doesn't really have to do with the nose either, since females actually probably select mates depending on who's the loudest. It just so happens that the size of the nose increases the volume of the male's call. Being louder for social monkeys like this also benefits communication. They'll make honks to communicate mood or the status of the group, and even have a special honk for infants. They'll also produce an alarm call to signal danger. So all in all, a larger nose is just good for survival. Tarsier Tarsiers are haplorheen primates with big ol' eyes that are 16 millimeters in diameter. That's as big or bigger than its entire brain. They have elongated tarsus bones, which is where the tarsier gets its name. This makes them great at clinging and leaping from vertical branches. Tarsiers like to just hang around and watch for prey to come about. They can turn their head a crazy 180 degrees in either direction, giving them full 360 vision. All this put together kinda makes them look more like aliens. Freaky. Tarsiers were once more widespread, but today are only found in maritime Southeast Asia. They're nocturnal and are the only extant species of primate that only eat meat. They mostly just eat bugs, but still, that's something. Giant Japanese Hornet Also known as the Asian Giant Hornet, basically, this is the spawn of Satan. It's the world's largest hornet, with a body length of 45mm and a 6mm long stinger. These murder hornets are native to South and East Asia, and have recently been found coming into the Pacific Northwest. Oh, lucky. Its quarter inch long stinger isn't just for show, cause it can deliver a potent venom that in cases of multiple hornets stinging at once can even kill a human. One man described the sensation of being stung as feeling like a hot nail being driven into my leg. To those of us who are rightfully afraid of wasps, this is pretty much the most terrifying thing possible. It's like a killing machine specifically designed to keep us up at night. Maned Wolf Maned wolves are large canines from South America. They kinda look like big foxes, but are in truth neither foxes nor even wolves for that matter. They get their names from the distinctive black mane running down their necks, and they probably got called wolves because of their long legs. Unlike many other canines, maned wolves are solitary and do not form packs, choosing to hunt alone. The IUCN lists maned wolves as near threatened due to habitat loss, and in 2011 when a female maned wolf got ran over by a truck, it underwent stem cell treatment at the zoo Brasilia, this being the first recorded case of the use of stem cell to heal a wild animal. Saiga Antelope Saigas are a critically endangered antelope, which today can only be found in one region in Russia. They kinda look like something out of Star Wars, with their big horns and big bloated downward facing nostrils. The Saiga's nose is like this because in the summer it helps filter out dust kicked up by the herd while cooling their body, and in the winter it helps heat up frigid air before getting into the lungs. Saiga's used to be much more widespread, ranging all the way from the British Isles to Alaska. Cave paintings featuring Saiga's can even be found in Europe. Today, the populations have shrunk as much as 95%, leading them to become critically endangered. However, in more recent years, they've experienced massive regrowth. As of 2022, there's an estimated 1.38 million Saiga in Kazakhstan. Pika. Now, I know what you're all probably thinking, and no, I don't think so. Pikas are small mountain dwelling mammals native to Asia and North America. They resemble their close relative, rabbits, but without the long ears. They live on rocky slopes and graze on primarily grasses, flowers, and young stems. In the autumn though, they do like to pull hay, soft twigs, and other stores of food into their burrows to eat during the winter. Pikas are also sometimes called the whistling hare because of their high pitched calls that act as alarms when diving into a burrow. Hornbill 
Hornbills are a family of bird found in tropical and subtropical Africa, Asia, and Melanesia. The first thing you'll notice about them is their long, downward curving bill, which sometimes has a cask on top. In some species, the cask is very prominent, and reinforced with hollow bones that help its call. The helmeted hornbill's cask is not hollow, but instead filled with hornbill ivory, which is used in epic mid-air battles. Some species of hornbills in Africa have mutualistic relationships with dwarf mongooses. They'll forage together and warn each other if predators are nearby. Despite Despite their similarities to toucans, the two groups are not related. This is a good example of something called convergent evolution, where two unrelated species will gain similar adaptations to fill similar ecological niches. Gila Monster Gila monsters are slow, heavy reptiles found in the southwest United States and Sonora, Mexico. It's the only venomous lizard found in the US, with all its closest relatives living in either Mexico or Guatemala. Because they're so slow, Gila monsters rarely pose a threat to humans. Despite that, they've gotten a pretty bad reputation as a killer animal and are sometimes killed even though they're supposed to be protected by Arizona state law. Gila monsters spend 90% of their lives in burrows or rocky shelters, preferring to inhabit scrublands, succulent deserts, and oak woodlands. They're active in the morning during dry seasons and move to different shelters every four to five days. They're big enough that their diet can consist of small mammals, small birds, other reptiles, eggs, that kind of thing. They store fat in their tails and so they don't need to eat all that often. Three to four extensive meals in spring are claimed to give them enough energy for the whole season. Chew Bill Shoebills are uncanny-looking large long-legged wading birds with huge bills. They live in large swamps of South Sudan and Zambia. They're normally pretty quiet, but sometimes make a creepy bill clattering sound while nesting. Honestly, all the noises this thing makes are eerie. To add to that, shoebills move very slowly, often being described as statuesque. Genetics place them close with pelicans or herons, so their diet mostly consists of fish. They like to inhabit poorly oxygenated marshes where fish have to frequently come up for air. Because of their huge bills, shoebills can eat fish much bigger than something like a heron can. Green Anaconda Found in South America and on the island of Trinidad, green anacondas are the heaviest and one of the longest known snake species. They can reach an astounding 5.21 meters long. They are species of boas, and like all boas, green anacondas are non-venomous, preferring to strike and coil around their prey with all their force. These guys are apex predators and can eat prey as large as deer, caimans, and even jaguars. If their meal is being a little too unruly, the green anaconda will sometimes drown them by intentionally holding their head underwater. That's just cruel. Northern Flying Squirrel The Northern Flying Squirrel is the only species of flying squirrel found in North America. They can be found in coniferous forests all across the top of the continent. So, flying squirrels don't actually fly, they more so glide using a patagium created by a big fold of skin. They do glide very efficiently though, being able to make 90 degree turns around obstacles if needed. Before landing, they raise their flattened tails, which changes their trajectory upwards, and then point their limbs forward to create a parachute effect. This expert aerial mobility did however come at a cost. Flying squirrels are very close clumsy on the ground and will choose to hide from danger instead of trying to make an escape. Stick Bug Stick bugs are long phasmids whose natural camouflage makes them look like sticks. This facade can be really convincing, but still, species have other forms of defense, like displays, spines, or toxic secretions. Members can be found on every continent except Antarctica, probably because there's no sticks to mimic. Oh yeah, and also because it's Antarctica. <laughs> Stick bugs are most abundant in the tropics and subtropics, and many of them can reproduce asexually, not requiring fertilized eggs to produce females. Females of the genus Phrygonastria are the world's longest insects, measuring up to 64 centimeters in length. This is yet another one made famous by internet memes. See? The internet truly is good for learning. Dingo Dingoes are dogs from Australia. Its taxonomical classification is highly debated, because no one can decide if they're just a form of domestic dog, a subspecies of dogs and wolves, or a full species of their own. Dingoes aren't that bizarre. I don't really know why they're in tier 2, or on this iceberg at all for that matter. I just had to bring them up because my channel icon just so happens to be a dingo. See? Full circle. Tasmanian Devil Tasmanian devils are carnivorous marsupials that up until recently could only be found in Tasmania, but has since been reintroduced to New South Wales. Tasmanian devils are noted for their black fur, strong smell, extremely loud screech, and as made famous by a certain Looney Tune, ferocity when eating. Their large head allows it to have one of the strongest bites per unit body mass of any extant predatory mammal. They can use those powerful attributes to hunt for prey, which can be something as big as a wallaby, but they are also known to scavenge on carrion. Red-bellied piranha 
Red-bellied piranhas are fish found in rivers all over South America. They are omnivorous and like to feed on insects, worms, crustaceans, and other fish. Red piranhas have gotten a reputation as a ferocious frenzy-feeding predator, but in reality they're primarily scavengers. That whole thing where they'll eat a piece of meat all the way to the bones is really just some Hollywood shenanigans. Any cases of feeding frenzy schools are rare, and usually staged due to provocation and starvation. They do, however, have impressive razor-sharp teeth that probably added its fair share to the piranha's legend. Snow Leopard Snow leopards are elusive species of big cats found in the mountain ranges of Central and South Asia. They're usually recognizable for their beautiful thick white and black coat. Snow leopards have broad paws and prominent fur on their undersides to help walk on the snow and rugged terrain. They mostly hunt goats and sheep that they can find in the mountains, pursuing them down steep mountainsides and using the momentum of their leap to carry prey down. The species is vulnerable, with an estimated population fewer than 10,000 adults and expected to decline about 10% by 2040. Its main threats are poaching for its skins and habitat destruction. Headlouse Headlice are tiny little insect parasites that spend their entire lives on the human scalp, sucking human blood, like a really lame and gross vampire. They don't have wings like most insects, nor do they have powerful legs like fleas, so headlice prominently attach themselves through contact, but can also be spread through sharing combs, hats, beds, etc. They don't spread any diseases like their body louse cousins, but you probably still want to get rid of them anyway, cause, you know, they're gross. Brown-throated sloth Brown-throated sloths are the most common of the three-toed sloth species, being found in the neotropics of Central and South America. Sloths get their name from being really, really slow. They sleep 15 to 18 hours out of the day, and are only active for brief periods of time. They hang out high in the canopies, and really don't do anything other than sleep and eat leaves. The only time they do come down from the trees is about once a week, and only to use the bathroom. Nobody really knows why they come all the way down to do this. It could be to hide their location from predators, but if so, that's like the least amount of work to put in to do so, which does track for these guys. Sloths move so little that algae and some species of moths will grow and live on their fur. This may be absolutely disgusting, but it does have the unintended side effect of helping their camouflage. Fire Salamander Fire salamanders are the most common salamanders in Europe. They have cool black and yellow skin that turns out to be a warning signal for their toxicity. The fire salamander's toxin, called samandarin, causes convulsions, hypertension, and hyperventilation in all vertebrates. It's secreted through the salamander's skin and can be potentially life-threatening to humans. They get the name fire salamander because in medieval times, it was said that salamanders had fireproof skin, and wearing it or keeping a salamander charm could make you resistant to fire. These guys can live for a surprisingly long time, with one specimen in Germany living up to 50 years. Well that's all for the first two tiers, but stick around because part two will hopefully not be too far off. I went with kind of a different approach to this iceberg than my normal videos. You guys will have to tell me how it went. What did you like? What did you not like? What could be done better? What did I get wrong? That kind of thing. I know a lot of the entries in these first two tiers were an all too unknown, but I thought a lot of them had some weird quirks that I just had to talk about. This first one is just kind of to wet your palate to what's to come, because trust me, some of those later tiers have some weird animals. So don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and if you're interested in, you know, I guess a little more comedic approach to my videos, then why don't you check out some of my other content? In a desperate attempt to not drag this outro out as long as possible, because again, I did not write an outro and so I will ramble forever, uh, I'll just try to stop it now. Thanks for coming out, thanks for the support, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.